This high-level gathering will primarily focus on gender issues and solutions to the decline in women's inclusion. The conference is hosting government officials, development partners, and key stakeholders who can make choices about how to go forward with gender inclusion. In Nigeria, women account for half of the population. Despite their number, the World Economic Forum has projected that gender equality can only be achieved 130 years from now, that is four generations to come. And for Nigeria, achieving gender inclusion will be more difficult. However, many assembled here hope that gender equality is reached soon. The UN wants more money set aside for this cause to tear down obstacles and build a more gender-inclusive society. In 2025, I think many of you know that we will mark the 30th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration um, Platform for Action, which is our global framework for gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls. The other day I was reading the Nigeria Review Report for the 25th anniversary, and while progress has been made, many of the challenges that were highlighted in this report remain today. From restrictive social and gender norms, poor implementation of laws and policies, inadequate funding, insecurity, conflict, gender-based violence, among other areas. And of course, I'm representing UNICEF, so I cannot stand here without mentioning adolescent girls, because they are near and dear to our UNICEF heart. Um, our conversations on gender and inclusion must recognize girls as a distinct and diverse group with unique needs and priorities. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not, across the world, poverty still wears a woman's face. This is especially true in Nigeria, where according to the World Bank, 70% of the population living below the poverty line are women. There are more than twice as many Nigerian women living in poverty than men, and still women have lesser access to the skills, tools, and resources that would help close this gap. Think about that number for a second. That's millions of women whose hopes, dreams, and aspirations are curtailed, leaving lots of human potential and, quite frankly, economic growth on the table. The reality is that Nigeria can't reach its true potential when women and girls lack economic opportunity. I have a 12-year-old daughter, and I have refused to believe and accept that even in her generation and the ones to come after her, they would not experience gender equality. I refuse to accept that. And this is why three years ago I joined Plan International as a global and national agency established 85 years ago to seek for the rights of children and equality for girls. And so leading Plan International over the last three years, where have I gone? I have led the team to be very intentional with identifying, exposing, and tackling every hindrance and every social fabric that holds back women and girls. The Nigerian government pledges to support women and girls to achieve their potentials. It is imperative for a diverse range of stakeholders to systematically collaborate across different societal sectors to explore gender-related avenues toward realizing the collective goal of alleviating poverty. Having recognized the gap between gender exclusions and poverty, our institute has continually bring together relevant stakeholders. There are policies in place that should help women to strive in their different spheres of endeavors, but experts argue that these policies are not good enough. Women still struggle to have access to education, health care, politics and finances. Until all of these barriers are broken, women will continue to struggle. Punaruman Benjamin, Arise News.